Hi, and welcome to part four of our tap block project video. And today we're going to be laying out and drilling holes. So I have two blocks, one of each size, uh, and I've put some layout blue on the uh, secondary and on the primary surfaces that I want to lay out on. Uh, why two? Well, remember, one is about ten thousandths of an inch over, and one is about one thousandths of an inch over. So I'm going to have to lay them out separately, because obviously the dimensions are going to change. The oversized one, I'll have to add on a little to each dimension. But I'm laying out one of each for a very different reason. Now, the size per size block, I'm going to lay out I'm going to punch and I'm going to drill. So that would be a simple sequence for basically bench work techniques of hole positioning. Now, and that's going to be more than accurate enough because if we recall the tolerance of, for the positioning of the holes was a plus or minus 10. So really there's no problem getting that with that technique. And the other one, the one that's oversized, the ones that are going to be sent out to be ground, well, I'm going to lay out, but I'm not going to punch. I'm going to lay out just as a general guide, a safety layout in other words. And then I'm going to go over to the mill and I'm going to center drill or point these holes uh, using the coordinates on the mill. So two different ways of going about it. But in both cases, I'm only going to be laying out one block because once I've produced the center drills on each of these blocks, well I'm going to move on to a production style setup because you may be making one but I'm going to be making ten and I don't want to spend the rest of the summer drilling small holes. Obviously the block that I'm going to be drilling uh, the center holes into on the mill is going to be more accurate than the one that I'm going to produce on the drill press. But what's important here to remember is that one won't be any better than the other because ultimately what matters in a project is the tolerance required and the drilling on the drill press with punched uh, scribed marks will, will be more than accurate enough so we'll be seeing both techniques but really one or the other will give a perfect or a very good result now I'm laying out one of each size of blocks uh, because if you're doing this as a home project, well, you're going to be only doing one block. But you have to remember that I'm doing 10. So I'm going to use uh, this layout for one each sized blocks. And I'm going to then pass on to a more production style setup. Because I don't want to spend the rest of the summer drilling holes. So I have my plan. I have my height gauge. And I verified its calibration. I verified that my scribing tip is really on zero when my scale reads zero. Uh, I have my blocks blued up. In other words, uh, one primary and one secondary surfaces have been blued for layout. And I have my magnifying glass here because my eyes aren't what they used to be. Now, I'm not wearing my safety glasses here, but I'm not doing anything that's dangerous for my eyes. And really, if I have any hope of seeing what I'm doing here, I'd better have these reading glasses on rather than my safety glasses. But don't fret, if I was working, I would have my safety glasses on. If I look at the Cartesian table, well, I can see that the first lines that I want to scribe, I always start with the lines that are closest to the reference surfaces. Well, the first lines that I want to scribe are going to be at 180 thousandths of an inch from the X reference surface. And I'm also going to have a set of lines at 180 thousandths of an inch from my Y reference surface. So I'm going to do all those holes at the same time and save a lot of setting up of my uh, height gauge here. So I've already set it at 180, uh, 180 thousandths of an inch and I'm ready to lay out holes C and E and G in my X direction dimension and then we'll be laying out A and E in the Y axis. So here we go.
So that takes care of my X coordinates for my holes C, E, and G. Now D I'm going to do in the X coordinates and it's all by itself. So for D I'm going to set up at 370 thousandths of an inch in my X direction. And here's my part. Now note that the lines that I scribed in my X plane go clear across the part, okay? And the lines that I scribed in my Y plane, well, don't, or the Z. They're only partial lines. And that way I get an intersection only where there is actually going to be a hole. If I scribe all my lines full length, I end up with a checkerboard that's quite confusing. We laid out two parts. One of the set of five parts that are size per size and one of the set of five parts that are ten thou oversize for grinding. But we're going to punch the locations of the holes only on one of the two. And it's important that that one be the one that's size per size. Now we're punching our size per size block because it's these punch marks that are going to guide the drill to their proper, to its proper position. And that is because we're using a sequence here of uh, laying out, punching, and drilling on the drill press. And we need those punch marks, because without punch marks, the drill is going to want to wander. It'll never be on an accurate coordinate. We are not punching the block that is going to be a jig pointed or have its holes positioned on the mill. And that's because it's the coordinates and the stiffness of the mill that's going to position the drill in its proper place. And we're going to be using a center drill first off to get rid of the uh, moving drill problem. Okay, and, now, and that's important. If I punch these holes first off, well the, the drill could actually be drawn off coordinates or even break my very small center drill by pulling it away from its proper coordinates. Remember, I'm never going to be able to punch hole locations as accurately as I would be able to position them on the mill. So I don't want those inaccurate or less accurate punch marks drawing my drills off center and possibly wreaking havoc. So normally on my size per size block the one that I'm punching and drilling, well this block I would move over to the drill press and once it was punched, seeing that the punch marks are wider than the uh, chisel edge point of the drill, well I can directly use each size of drill wanted directly into the hole. And I wouldn't be using a center drill on this type of setup. But I'm going to be doing something a little different here. Seeing as you have one to make, well I have ten to produce. And as mentioned earlier, I don't want to spend the rest of the summer setting up and drilling holes. So what I want to do here is I'm going to use these two first blocks as gauges. And I'm going to center drill the position of the seven holes on the mill but I'm also going to go over to the drill press and use my center punch marks here to center drill those seven positions also. And then I'm going to move on to a more production style setup. And I'll be using those center drilled holes that haven't been drilled out yet to position my part and ultimately a little fixture that will hold it properly oriented for each size of hole that I want to drill and then I'll be able to go and drill hole after hole on each block and save myself what really is the most time consuming and that is the tool changes.
So let's get back to our punching. And for precision punching, and this has already been mentioned in other videos, but I'm going to mention it again. To accurately punch, you need two different punches. You need a prick punch and you need a center punch. The prick punch is a lot pointier. 30 degrees, 40 degrees point on it. And it's a lot more delicate. Your center punch is heftier and it has 60 to 90 degrees. I prefer closer to 90, okay? And it's a lot heftier. Now your prick punch you're going to use with a very light and delicate hammer because it's really your precision punch. This is the one that's going to give you the precision you're looking for. And your center punch, well, you're going to use with a much heftier hammer. And this is the one that's going to widen that mark to the point where the chisel edge of your drill will fit into it. So let's get to our punching. And you can see here that I have my surface plate, cast iron. I have my heavy but small lapping plate. And on top of that I have a 1, 2, 3 block. So I've acquired some mass here, something that can absorb the energy that I'm going to be punching and really reduce the rebound that I'm going to be getting. So that's the proper setup here and I'm well positioned. So we're going to start with our prick punch and as I mentioned it's not to be struck with force so it can be quite delicate and the fact that it is quite delicate and that it is a lot pointier than the uh, center punch well permits me to position it with greater accuracy. Now I'm not just going to deposit it onto the intersection that I've laid out. I'm going to lean it to about 30 degrees and come into my lines to my intersection at about a 45 degree to two uh, intersecting lines. I'm going to position the point on that intersection and then I'm going to raise up the punch to punch. So let's take a look at that. So I position at 45. At this point you can use a jeweler's loop here to just refine your positioning. I like that. I'm going to come up to 90 degrees and lightly tap that. Now's the time to verify have I positioned that mark on the intersection of my two laid out lines. Okay, so I'm on center on my X, but I'm a little low, just a touch low on my Y. So I'm going to readjust now before that punch mark gets too big. It's easy to move just slightly that punch mark as long as we don't center punch it and make a huge mark. So we're going to just reinstall on our base to get our prick punch and I'm going to just lean it towards me because I want to move that center mark just slightly towards the top end of the part in the Y axis. So I'm going to reinstall into the punch mark that I made previously. I'm going to lean the punch towards me because I want to go up a little bit in Y. And I'm just going to lightly tap and come back straight again. Let's check that again. A lot better, but a little more adjustment. So, reinsert. I'm going in the same direction. There, I'm happy with that. And now with my center punch, I'm going to enlarge that mark. Remember, we use the heftier hammer with the center punch. Quite happy with that. And now we do the same for all the other holes.
So there's our seven holes positioned. Now we're going to center drill them. Yeah, I'm punching. I said we were going to drill, but I'm punching because I forgot to mention that now would be the proper time if you want to identify your parts with punching. Uh, well, now would be the time to do it because obviously once we drill those holes, we're going to weaken the part structure and punching onto the part could really deform the holes. So the tertiary surfaces don't have any holes in them and that's where I'm identifying the parts. So I'm not going to go into detail uh, about how to freehand punch uh, letters, numbers or scales on the part, on this part anyhow, because I already have some videos out there that describe the process. Now, if you go to my webpage, thatlazymachinist.com, and you don't have to, all these videos are on YouTube, and all my webpage is really is, is a series of links to those YouTube videos. But if you want to find them easily and have them all in one place, well, you go to my webpage, thatlazymachinist.com. It's free. There's no signing up. And you look on the third page in the orange section, you'll find a video on uh, the 123 block. And that'll be the uh, video 024, 123 block, part 2. And in that video, somewhere in the video, just before the heat treatment, I describe how to do some number punching. Also, on the same page, in the same orange section, you'll find a video, 012, uh, that's the Drill Point Gauge Project Part 3. And in that video, well, you'll also see some uh, number punching, a freehand number punching. And for scale punching, well, you can go and see on that same page three, but this time in the green section, which is the little quickie section, uh, you can go see the fourth video that's called the scale on the drill point gauge project. And it's a little quickie and it describes how to punch the scale on that project. So now I'm going to reposition here and let's take a closer look at what I've punched on my parts. Okay, so here's what I end up with, and you'll have to excuse the uh, rectitude of this uh, stamping work. It's freehand, and I must admit that my eyes and my arms and my hands aren't just what they used to be. So, it's still pretty good, and, and it'll have to do. So, I have three blocks here with a W, I, Y, B. What's in your box? And these will be the three blocks that I hope will end up in Keith Fenner's toolbox giveaway. Then I have one here that's BSG and that's Basement Shop Guy and Brad thanks for all the work you're doing trying to organize us YouTube machinists to help out with the Keith Fenner uh, toolboxes and for that I want to thank you and here's one that's for you. So when these pass through your hands well you keep one of these blocks here if possible the one with the Basement Shop Guy uh, written on it or the BSG. Down here I have Keith Fenner and that's for obviously KF for Keith Fenner uh, who does so much work to get this, uh, these toolbox to, to people who deserve them and I think it's just appropriate for me to say a little thank you by donating this very small tool to Keith. So once these are finished up, Keith when you get them this KF one, well it's for you. Over here I have the five blocks that I'm going to finish myself. Now the first here is for a guy that has supported me in my YouTube video making and efforts. He's clued me into a lot of what's going on and actually has connected me to other people. He's the guy that first uh, clued me into the existence of Keith Fenner and Tom Lipton and so many other YouTubers. So a big thanks to this mess and for that as soon as I can find your address, and uh, you'll have to give it to me, I'll send you uh, this one, it's for you. Now this one is ML, and that's my initials, Mark Lequier. Because oddly enough, I designed this tool some oh, 25, 26 years ago, 25 years ago, something like that. And hundreds of my students have produced these blocks for themselves, 
but I actually have never made this project and it's it's going to be mine so this one is for me I've never actually owned this type of tapping block and the three last ones well I haven't decided what to do with them yet I'm thinking of helping out a friend so I'll see but I've just put LM for lazy machinist on these three blocks and I'll decide what to do the, with them at a later date so here we are ready to start drilling and we're going to start with center drilling all the punched marks that I produced now I'm using here a very small vise to hold my part. Why a small vise? Well because I'm using a very small center drill. This is a number two center drill and its tip is tiny so it doesn't have a lot of strength and I'm going to be centering the part by inserting that tip in rotation into the marks that I produced with the punches. So I want the part to move quite freely here so that it can position itself naturally under the axis of rotation of the tool. Now this tool is quite small so it's going to require a high RPM. I've set the machine to about 1500 revolutions per minute. And if I measure the small end and calculate that should be somewhere around a thousand RPM too slow. But you have to remember this is a center drill and that six, second 60 degree angle that I'm going to be cutting just slightly. I'm going to penetrate that 60 degree shoulder just slightly into the part but even at that it increases my surface of contact and requires a lower RPM. So instead of 2500 I'm running about 1500 and that should be just fine. So oh, one last thing. Delicate tool, tough material, very little pressure and a few drops of cutting oil or in this case I'm going to be using tapping fluid because it's quite delicate work well really doesn't hurt so let's get to the drilling Now, moving that block or pivoting it seemed quite easy because there's something that I'm not showing you here and that's that these vices are a little finicky to work with because the lead screw or the screw that tightens the vise down 
doesn't necessarily loosen the jaw that well. It doesn't draw the jaw back. So it's a little arduous to work with. But I've added a spring. When I do a job like this, and I know that I'm going into a production style in a few minutes, well, I add a spring inside. It stabilizes my parallel, so my parallel, I don't have to worry about junk getting under it. It holds it in place. And it, it stabilizes the jaw, so I can turn a half turn back, change my block, turn a half block, and turn forward, and everything stays nice. So take a look at this little spring in here. So oh, there's my part, all center drilled and ready to go. Now, had I been making only one of these, I probably would have moved directly to the finishing drilling operation and I would have skipped this center drill operation. But these small holes with their 60 degree chamfer are going to help me to position the part in a production style setup that's really going to save me a lot of time because you have to remember I have. 10 of these blocks to make. So that's what we'll be looking at next time. So until then, have fun, be safe, and happy machining.